Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Thomas's on this bright and beautiful day outside. Um, we're few in number this morning, but I'm sure, as is always at St. Thomas's, we'll have more by the end of the service. Um, we're joined today online, so friends from Charlton and beyond, so wherever you are, um, we hope that you'll have a wonderful service, and we're delighted to see you. My name is Angelique. I'm a member of the church here, and I'll be leading us through the service this morning. Our Reverend Liz will be preaching and presiding, Eric will be reading the New Testament, and Harriet will be leading the prayers. Just a word that social distancing does still apply, and so if we can please be cautious when we're coming to take communion, um, I'd be really grateful. Before we start, let's just be quiet for a moment, and remember that wherever we are, God is with us. And we start our service by listening to our first hymn, Immortal Love Forever Full. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can I add my very warm welcome to everyone here this morning? Um, 
Today is the seventh Sunday after Trinity, so it's not a special Sunday, um, other than all Sundays are special. But today we'll be thinking about um, how we can have compassion for others as Christ did, but also how we can look after ourselves. The Lord be with you. We say together the prayer preparation. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to, to whom, whom all hearts, hearts are, are open, all, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Father eternal, giver of light and grace. We have sinned against you and against our neighbor in what we have thought and said and done. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. So let's just pause for a moment while we remember what it cost God to forgive us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, 
Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things. Graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who's alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Angelique's going to read our Old Testament lesson now. It's a reading from Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all of the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Eric will read our New Testament for us. Uh, reading from the letter to the Ephesians. So then, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision, by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to the death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near for told him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple 
in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place of God. This is the word of the Lord. We're now going to listen to our gradual hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd, after which Liz is going to read the gospel and preach. If we can all stand for the gospel, if you can, that would be great. Thank you. Alleluia, alleluia. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, He saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd and he began to teach them many things. When they'd crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, 
people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Do sit down, make yourselves comfortable. Some of you will be too young to know Jesus Christ Superstar, but it was um, a big thing in the 1970s, and it's still, I think, probably on the stage, um, or will be, when um, the, the theatres reopen. But in it, there's a scene in which lepers, the crippled, lame, and blind, track Jesus down and push themselves onto him. The picture of Jesus it presents underestimates and weakens the Christ we meet in the Gospels. As he's hemmed in by needy people flocking round him, they ask, will you touch, will you mend me, Christ? Won't you touch, won't you heal me, Christ? And the superstar version of Jesus responds, there's too many of you, don't push me. There's too little of me. Then, exasperated and overwhelmed, he screams, heal yourself. There's no evidence in the Gospels for this picture of Jesus, one who is overwhelmed by people's need. The Christ we meet in today's Gospel has tried to take his disciples to a deserted place, but still the hordes had pursued and found him. Rather than telling them he was shattered and could take no more responsibility for them, though, Christ took one look at the sick, the needy, the poor, the lame and the blind, and his heart went out to them. The Jesus of Superstar lets the needy down. His exhaustion makes him turn them away. But the Jesus we meet here in Mark's Gospel is completely different. This Jesus meets their every need. This passage gives us a wonderful pattern for the mission of the church, a pattern we do well to study and follow. It's one of my favorite lines in the whole of the Bible. He had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Compassion. It was Christ's starting point. Compassion happens when we listen to another's pain, when we watch another's struggle, when we notice another's exclusion or sense another's emptiness. When we're compassionate, it's not long before we get an insight into the burdens some people carry the scars some people bear, the pain some people live with. Compassion should be a mark of a church community as it is of Jesus, the one we follow. But that lovely sentence gives us another important point too. Christ took responsibility for meeting the needs of the ones who were like sheep. He became their shepherd, took them up in his arms and cradled them. As a church community, this has to be a responsibility that falls to us as well. We are bound to say when we reflect on the neediness of the world, we can't turn away. Because if we're following in the footsteps of our Lord, we're not at liberty to shrug our shoulders. This need has something to do with us. Mark writes, wherever Jesus went, 
into villages or cities or farms. They laid the sick in the marketplaces. But it was only because he was out among the people that Christ gained a reputation as one who would help them. It was only because he was approachable that people had confidence to come to him. Reflecting on this passage then gives us another pointer as to how we're to do mission. Be a presence in our community. Get alongside our neighbors. Be open and easy to talk to. When we do those things, we never know what might come our way. We never know what conversations may start and relationships grow, what opportunities God will give us to be Christ in our locality. We also have a mission opportunity, though, that Jesus never did have. Christ had no home, no place he could invite people to, no territory that was his. He was always the guest. We, though, do have space. We have a building entrusted to us, and so we have the opportunity to be hosts to be generous sharers, to welcome people into this place. St. Thomas's is a large building. For those of you who don't know, there's a whole area upstairs as well, a huge hall. It's got green space and trees and plants outside. It's a place where people can meet and connect, where they can celebrate and mourn where projects can be run and people find a sense of belonging. Within a few years, a new housing development will grow up next to this church on that side of the road. This building is at the junction of where old will meet new, where existing neighbors could have a chance to meet newcomers and together become a new integrated community, where people could find support and where people could serve and care. Jesus had nowhere to call home. He went into villages, villages, cities, farms, marketplaces in order to meet and to love people. We can do that as well. But we also have the privilege of a building into which we can welcome people, a place to offer hospitality, a place to share. Compassion and responsibility, making ourselves open and available, going out and welcoming in, all these we are called to. This mission, though, comes at a price. At the start of this morning's gospel, we find Jesus saying to his exhausted friends, come away and rest a while. Engaging in the mission of the church isn't necessarily a relaxing thing. It can be draining and challenging. It is sacrificial work. So for all of us, it's vital we take Christ's advice to come away and rest a while, to find refreshment, to receive healing. Only that will equip us to go out again. If we're to be a mission church, we also need to be a church that waits on the Lord. That way, our faces will mirror his likeness. Resting in God's presence will also be the space where we'll remember, if we're ever in danger of forgetting, that this mission we're engaged in doesn't start with us. We're not the miracle workers. No one who touches the fringe of our cloak will be healed. But we can be the channels through which God can heal our broken world, through which God can love the women, men, and children alongside whom we live and work. That work will cost and it will hurt. 
So we have to let God rest, refresh, and renew us because we do none of this in our own strength. Out there are plenty of people who need shepherding, plenty who need comfort, who need hope or a chance to belong. Plenty who need an opportunity to discover they can be givers as well. Plenty who need not to be judged, but to be got alongside. If we're the church, we're bound to do as Christ did. All that has got something to do with us. I remember once leading a children's church, se a children's church session in which the children were asked how people at school or in the park will know that we belong to a church. One primary aged girl was probably thinking of a playground scenario when she gave her response, but her answer was both simple and profound. They'll know we belong to a church, she said, because we lift them up when they fall down. We lift them up when they fall down. That works for me as an image. There are many out there to be lifted up for whom we need compassion because they too are like sheep without a shepherd. Amen. So we're going to stand now to affirm our faith. Let's use form C, which is on page 10 of our booklets. We say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us pray now for the church and for the world, and let's be thankful for God's goodness. Harriet's going to lead our intercessions, so please make yourselves comfortable. We pray for our church, our Christian brothers and sisters in this neighborhood and for all who are searching for meaning in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for creation, human society, the sovereign, and those in authority. We offer prayers to, for Her Majesty the Queen, for, all, for our Prime Minister, and for our government and MPs. 
We pray for Sadiq Khan, Mayor of London. We consider the lands in which we were born. Today we remember especially Antigua, praying that peace and justice will reign there and that your church will thrive. We pray for the work of the CMS Church Mission Society, a charity whose mission it is to prove in promote involvement in Christian missions across the world. We pray for all people who live in countries where there are a few COVID-19 vaccines available and ask that all governments ensure fair access for everyone to vaccines. With the noise of global conflicts and human deprivation thundering in our ears, with the questions and doubts clamouring, we pray for your shepherding of our humanness and your leading in the secret places of the heart. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our community, for, who live and work, for all who live and work within the, Ch within the Charlton Triangle, for all who are involved in the Charlton Community Centre, for all living and working at Charlton Park Care Home. We pray for everyone who volunteers and attends meetings run by the Charlton Society, a local group which works to improve conservation in our area. We give thanks for everyone in our community who has provided essential services throughout the pandemic. Lastly, we ask God to consider the staff and patients at Queen Elizabeth Hospital and everybody involved with the Windrush School. With the statistics of family life challenging our values and with the pressures to conform to norms in conflict with God's will, we pray for your sound and centered wisdom in all our daily living and life choices. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who suffer, for those who are sick in mind, spirit or body, and for people who have asked for our support. We pray by name for David Newman, Pauline Mills, Eric, Elsie West, Mary Wickham, Fred Loveday, Reverend Richard McLean, Bishop Christopher, Edna Mc McNeeson, and Victoria Bates. With the stressed and overburdened, the overworked and the unemployed, we pray for balanced lives, for physical, mental, and spiritual health, for patience in times of trouble, and direction in times of confusion. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for those who have recently departed this world. As we remember with love and gratitude the lives of, who, of those who have died in faith, we commend them to your eternal rest and unchanging affection. We pray for all who moan, moan and pray by name for Margaret Strong, Jennifer Hinder and Sheila Newman who died recently. Lord, in your mercy, with the crowds of Galilee, our hearts are lifted with joy at your presence among us, for we know that you have the words of eternal life. God of mercy, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. Do you like to stand for the peace? We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace from a distance. Peace, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And as we listen to our offer for him, which is the Church of God, elect and glorious.
at the top of page 13 for those in the building. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who is sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Grace is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. Thomas, St. Luke and St. Richard, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. We say together, most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son is the true vine and the source of life, ever giving himself that the world may live, may we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion that in his saving cup we may share his glory and be made perfect in his love. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Notices, there's, there's, a, there's a bit actually, so hold on to your hats. Um, we had a lovely butterfly service here yesterday afternoon out in the garden where we, we counted butterflies and we thanked God for butterflies and for creation and we thought about what they can teach us about our lives. So um, thank you, massive thank you to Liz for organising that and it was a lovely, lovely... So we'll, we'll have other outdoor services. Um, the next one will be sort of in early autumn, so we'll let you know about those. It would be lovely for some more people to join us. Um, next Saturday, July the 24th, is um, its Messy Church Picnic. So um, if you know of any families or if you yourselves would be interested in going to that, have a look at our newsletter, the details are in that, or have a word with me afterwards. Um, as you may have seen in the newsletter, we've, been, um, we've got another grant, which is great. We've got a grant to help do up the upstairs hall. So um, that's really, really good. And as I was saying in the, the sermon this morning, we've got this wonderful space to share and to um, be hospitable in. So that will help us to um, make that space a welcoming, attractive place for people from our local community and for us to use. So that's more good news. Um, there's a concert here on the 7th of August at four o'clock, and um, it's in aid of our project in the garden to, to make a contemplative, a reflective uh, space in our garden. So tickets are 10 pounds. Um, tickets are available from Jim, who's not here at the moment, but again, the newsletter has got all that information. Um, and yeah, that should be a really lovely event. It will be restricted in numbers, um, but we, yeah, Saturday the 7th of August, four o'clock. Uh, I hope you recognize this place. Do you recognize this place? It, it's this church. And um, so look out soon, there'll be some of these bags on sale. And um, this lovely design of St. Thomas's Church has been done by Amabel, and Joelle has done the embroidery, and we're going to producing the, be producing these as tote bags. So um, we'll have more information about that 
soon, and I hope they're always useful, aren't they? I'm sure uh, people here and people hopefully online as well might like to buy one when they're available. Uh, and I've got a message at the end, which I mustn't forget to give for those people who are online. But I just need to say now something about, as you'll know, tomorrow is the day um, after, well, after today, it's no longer compulsory to wear face masks or to socially distance in public places, which includes churches. Um, up till now, it's been the law. Um, but as we all know also, the infection rate is really, really high. Um, and there are more hospital admissions now, and we're all being um, advised to take real care and be cautious. And I think in the, the church building, we're really, really keen to create an environment where everyone feels they can come and no one feels they have to stay away because it doesn't feel safe. Um, so the guidance from the Church of England also strongly encourages us to take account of the local situation. Um, I know in London, London's got the lowest level of vaccinations in the country, um, and I think the, the infection rate is going up quite steeply here. So we need to, um, and, we, and we especially need to proceed with special consideration for those who are vulnerable. So we've decided at the moment to keep our arrangements for worship the same as they are now. So we want to encourage people to continue to wear masks and to distance and to sanitize their hands. Um, and, and, that's out of, and that's out of courtesy to one another because as we've been told, as the scientists say, masks are really more about other people, protecting other people than ourselves, although they do protect us as well a bit. Um, so communion will remain just in one kind for the moment, and we won't be singing yet. Um, but we'll be watching infection rate, we'll be watching what happens over the next few weeks, and then we'll have a further decision early in August about a way forward, second week of August. I know this is, might be disappointing for some people, um, but I hope, and, and you know, clergy and church wardens will be very happy to hear your views, so please speak to us about your perspective on it. But, um, and we'll take all that into consideration as we move forward, but it just felt the best thing to do at the moment. Okay, I hope you understand that. And um, finally, a message for those online. Please stay behind after the service is finished um, because we've got three very simple questions we really, really want you to answer about the future of online church, and it would be really helpful um, this is just for people who are still attending online church. It'd be really helpful to have your responses so we can um, not leave anyone behind as we go forward and, and make sure that we are catering for everyone. So stay online after the service finishes. It will only honestly, it will only take a couple of minutes. Okay, that's me. Sorry, Angelou. girls to sing in if that's all right Liz. Um, next Sunday at three o'clock we are going to have a very very informal um, picnic in the churchyard where we're going to be singing some hymns outside socially distanced still keep making sure that we keep each other safe but if you're a bit like me and I'm missing singing a lot then do come along next Sunday afternoon and uh, we're going to have some to accompany us so we'll be in tune but it's really informal so bring your picnic bring your you know sparkly fruit juice because it's going to be a beautiful day and the other thing I just wanted to say if it's okay it's so lovely to see so many children in church and um, I know when my little boy was that high it used to be my most stressful time of the week literally that hour between 11 and 12 trying to keep them calm and what have you it is just so wonderful to see a growing congregation of children, so please don't fret. Okay, um, we say together our final prayer. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and open the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. 
Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you like to stand now for God's blessing? The Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you, all those you love and all those you pray for, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining our worship today, whether it's online or in person. We hope that you feel that you've met God here this morning and that you are ready to go out and join with what God is doing in your lives and in our community. Before we do that, we listen to our final hymn, all my hope on God is founded.